is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2022 mercedes-benz glc 300 courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown of course in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so i'm in this one today because there's actually a couple nice changes more new standard features really for the 2022 glc also this is an extremely good looking suv and we got the amg line package so there's a bunch of added stuff with that as well of course but in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system paddle shifters all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always Let's start with pricing. And so essentially there are two different configurations for the GLC. You got the GLC 300 rear wheel drive starting at $43,850. And then you have the Formatic permanent all wheel drive starting at $45,850. But regardless of which configuration that you go with, the power plant is going to be the same. Powering the Beast is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, putting out 255 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 273 pound feet of torque coming in at 1,800 RPM, power center rear wheels are all wheels through a nine speed automatic with paddle shifters which you guys know we will be testing out here in a little bit zero to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.3 seconds for the rear wheel drive 6.1 seconds then for the all-wheel drive both of those numbers extremely impressive actually and mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 27 highway for the rear wheel drive 21 in the city 28 on the highway for the all-wheel drive it's kind of interesting you get better highway mpgs in the all-wheel drive system here but anyways taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun paddle shifter or acceleration tests here in the glc i wanted to mention you guys the drive modes so there's a little button called dynamic it stands for dynamic select it's going to give you different drive modes including individual eco comfort sport and sport plus adjusting things like the shift points the throttle response steering sensitivity and suspension settings so now having got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find it straight away. Let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test at the same time. And let's see how quickly the paddle shifters react. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, let's put it in manual shift mode here. And first gear, here we go. Oh gosh. Okay, two things. It's dang freakishly quick for an SUV, I'll say that. Definitely not gonna have any issues with merging onto the highway. That was wonderful. And second thing, paddle shifters, I feel like they're always quick in Mercedes-Benz. Don't get me wrong, but they're a little bit quicker in maybe some of their cars and a lot of other vehicles. I feel like there was a little bit of a delay to the paddle shifters. It's not that bad. It's not like everyone's gonna be using the paddle shifters in an SUV anyway. So quite honestly, I'm not sure it really matters all that much, but I will say that acceleration, that was a beast of an acceleration, man. That was fun. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 13.5 inch ventilated front disc, in the back 12.6 inch solid rear disc. As far as that 60 zero stopping distance goes, it is going to come in at a very impressive 110 feet. Having said that, braking feel has been perfectly fine in my short test drive here today, so definitely no issues when it comes to the braking. Touching on suspension and handling, up front, you're gonna get an independent four link front suspension. In the back, independent five arm multi-link rear suspension. As far as ride quality goes again it's been perfectly fine definitely no issues with the glc soaking up hagerstown's road imperfections here so i'm definitely digging that as far as steering feel goes it is a very noticeable adjustment dependent upon which drive mode that you put it in and again the individual driving mode actually allows you to tailor the settings to your own liking so i would probably put it in that personally because i like the heavier steering feel that sport mode gives but then i don't necessarily need that crazy acceleration that sport mode gives all the time so i would probably leave in a regular acceleration but heavier steering feel in that individual driving mode. So that's what I personally would do. But I do love the steering feel in the sport driving mode. I'll say that. As far as cabin noise goes, I do have the air on right now. But quite honestly, we're going 60 miles per hour. And it's a pretty quiet cabin. I got to be honest. I guess it's to be expected since we're in a Mercedes after all. But it is noticeably quieter than some of the other SUVs that I've recently tested. So well done, Mercedes Benz, for that. Then touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. And typically with a kind of somewhat smaller SUV like the GLC really shouldn't have any issues there so that is 100% on point rain sensing windshield wipers also come standard on the GLC gotta love that essentially what that is is whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall it's gonna automatically turn on these windshield wipers for you so it's just one less thing you gotta worry about kind of like automatic headlights 
and there is an optional head-up display available for an additional $1,100 if you wanted to go that route. It's going to project your speed, speed limit, and safety features onto your windshield in case you wanted to have a little added visibility there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2022 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300, finished in polar white. In case anyone was curious of our exterior color name, but let's go ahead and start up front on this one here. Dual horizontal aluminum trim accents through that front grille. That is going to be the standard configuration, but we don't have that today. And here's why we actually have the AMG line package. It goes for $1,950. That gives you the traditional diamond block front grille, which looks dang good. But that is what you guys are currently looking at right now, of course. Also, we have another option in the middle of it all. We have the illuminated star. That is a $500 option if you wanted to go that route. That looks dang good at night. I always notice that when I'm driving at night and I'm passing a Mercedes. Not all of them have it, but the ones that do, you can definitely notice it. It's pretty darn cool. But aluminum trim then found on the lower portion of that front bumper, unless you go with the AMG line package, and then it's going to be gloss black. To the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. It comes with the automatic feature, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights will turn on automatically for you then. But then one of the newly standard features for the 2022 GLC is going to be automatic high beams, meaning when it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to dim those high high beams back to low beams then when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bump it back up to high beams so again one less thing you got to worry about but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the glc all right so now since we are around to the side satin aluminum roof rails do come standard however again the amg line package is going to turn that into gloss black and that's going to be the pretty much the universal theme for everything that i'm going to say when it comes to the exterior at least satin chrome window surrounds unless it's the amg line then it's gloss black Rear privacy glass does come standard across the board. Taking a look at the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals coming standard and blind spot warning indicators as well, which is always a good thing. Taking a look down at the wheel configurations, 18 inch five spoke alloys is going to be the standard setup. 19 inch AMG twin five spoke alloys is currently the configuration that you guys are looking at right now. And that of course comes with the AMG line package. And then there are actually plenty of 19 inch and 20 inch wheel designs that are going to be available for some added personalization as well but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of this one and so but now since we are around to the back rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard just below that rear window wiper led tail lights coming standard across the board as well you do have the formatic badging if the particular glc that you end up going with is equipped that's the all-wheel drive system of course and just below it all you will find an extremely good looking rear diffuser heck yeah that's with the amg line package by the way but that looks dang good but then to the sides integrated dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips so having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. It's super now since we are around to the back of the GLC. When it comes to opening that rear tailgate, it is a power tailgate that does come standard for all trim levels across the board. There's actually a button on the key fob. There's also a button on the driver's side door and a button on the tailgate itself, of course as well but once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 19.4 cubic feet behind that second row if that was not enough space there is a 40 20 40 split and it is a power folding second row so there's actually a button in the cargo area just simply press that and they're going to automatically fold down for you but once folded down that is going to bump that up to 56.5 cubic feet also in that cargo area you will find some cargo lighting there is a rear cargo cover that comes standard there's a 12 volt power outlet back there and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you're actually going to find a spare tire along with a decent amount of in-floor storage as well to store maybe a tire inflator kit or an ice scraper or something like that so actually is a decent amount of room back there so i liked that then make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 37.3 inches so for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had in the second row there there is going to be rear ventilation that comes standard rear center armrest with cup holders as well 
And if you wanted heated rear seats, that is an option for $580 if you wanted to go that route. But then making our way up to the front seats, power adjustable front seats with four-way power lumbar and thigh support coming standard. All of those adjustment buttons found on the driver's side door, of course, in typical Mercedes fashion. Memory settings then for up to three different drivers also found on the door there. MB Tech's upholstery coming standard, heated front seats coming standard, ventilated front seats going for $450 if you wanted that, and then full leather seating going for $1,620 if you wanted to go that route. But overall, seating was of course plenty comfortable with all the different adjustments that you have. You really shouldn't have any issues finding your perfect driving position in the GLC. Then make our way to the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. I like how the bolsters, the 10 2 grips, are a little bit on the thicker side. That is definitely a good thing in my personal opinion. Leather wrap steering wheel does come standard. You can get a heated steering wheel for an additional $250 if you wanted to go that route. We do have that today, and I absolutely love it. But anyways, then making our way to the startup, let me start by showing you guys the key here. Essentially, all of your buttons are located on one side of the key, being lock, unlock, and that button to pop the uh, rear tailgate there. But it is all keyless entry with the push button start, and then there's a remote start via the Mercedes Me mobile app, but don't have that hooked up, of course. I'm just going to put my phone of the brake here and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee then and so once started up speedometer is on your left tachometer is on your right and the whole thing that we are looking at at least right now is a 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster and by the way that's a 750 dollars option analog gauges do come standard but since we have the digital gauge cluster do want to mention to you guys if you go in through system and then designs and displays on the infotainment screen here there's actually a few different gauge configurations that you could choose between like classic sport and progressive completely changing the look of the gauges so i absolutely love that if you're going to have digital gauges you might as well make it customizable like mercedes-benz is doing here so i am a big fan of the gauges of course it comes with everything you would expect like outside temperature how many miles you have left until you hit empty and so on but anyways let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality there is a panorama roof available for fifteen hundred dollars we don't have that today dual zone climate control does come standard garage door openers can be found underneath of the frameless rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors also coming standard oak wood trim available that is pretty cool we do have that um and it's a matte oak wood trim by the way as well which i personally prefer it gives a nice little texturized finish to it there wireless phone charger goes for 200 bucks if you want that premium package goes for $700. We do have that one as well, but that gives you 64 colors of ambient lighting and a hands-free power tailgate. So I know somebody was going to ask if it's hands-free at some point in this video. So that's your answer. Get the premium package. But overall, interior quality was excellent. I always love the ambient lighting in Mercedes-Benz. I always say they do it better than any other manufacturer out there as far as ambient lighting goes. So definitely a big fan of that and very high-end finishes, of course. But then make your way to the infotainment screen. A 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with them. Android Auto, Apple CarPlay factory navigation system then as well you could check out your climate control settings up there there's actually a cool theme section if you kind of swipe up at the very bottom of that infotainment screen it's going to give you a bunch of different themes that essentially adjust everything including the panorama roof if you were to get that option including the ambient lighting colors and a bunch of other things as well so always get a kick out of the theme section in this but of course you can also check out your radio information as well so when it comes to the sound system six speakers come standard that's what we have today but there is a 13 speaker Burmester sound system that goes for $850. You can get that if you like. That comes with 590 watts and a nine channel digital amplifier. But again, that's not the one we have today. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> Right, gotta be honest you guys i i've said this in so many of my videos i test so many six speaker sound systems i've probably tested over 500 sound systems at this point for six speakers that's pretty darn good there was a decent amount of bass clarity was pretty all right as well i mean it's definitely not going to be as good as the Bremaster, but like i said for six speakers i personally would be fine with that that was a pretty good sound system if i'm being honest but last thing i wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen of course is when you do put this thing in reverse you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board there is a surround view monitor available that goes for six hundred dollars if you wanted to go that route and as always that 
that's going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the GLC is an IIHS top safety pick, which is excellent. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard. Mercedes-Benz emergency call service, meaning if you get into an accident, they're going to automatically call you, see if you need an ambulance or the police or anything else, which I love. Blind spot assist with rear cross traffic alert, attention monitoring system, crosswind assist, which is something I still haven't seen on any other manufacturer. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but kind of prevents you from swaying into the other lane when it's super windy out. So I love that feature. Parktronic with active parking assist as well. Then if you were to go with the driver assistance package, it goes for $1,700. That is going to give you adaptive cruise control, active steering assist, evasive steering assist, active brake assist with cross traffic function, automatic emergency braking, speed limit assist, lane keep assist, lane change assist, and route based speed adaptation as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here, excellent styling, very quick acceleration. I Honestly, I was impressed when it comes to the acceleration, a lot quicker than I thought it was gonna be. Great braking as well, 60 to zero and 110 feet is like sports car good, honestly, that's excellent. The best ambient lighting of any other manufacturer, in my personal opinion. As far as room for improvement goes, the uh, safety features that have rambled off there, part of the driver assistance package, that should come standard, a lot of that. A lot of that does come standard on other brands like Honda and Toyota and non-luxury brands even. So Mercedes, if you're watching this, I would try to make that standard in the future. But quite honestly, that's really all I got. This is finished pretty darn good, but let me know what you guys think of the GLC in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.